So we come to Peter. Episode 20. In Matthew chapter 16. We see Jesus Christ having a discussion with his disciples. He said, I want you to tell me. You are out there in the public. You hear the people, what they say, their gossips. Tell me, what are they saying about me? Tell me. What do they think about me? And they said, yes. Yes, Lord. Some people you say you are a liar. Some people say that you are John the Baptist. Others say that you are one of the prophets. Is that all right? But you, what do you say I am? Who do you think? What do you say? Who do you say I am? And Peter got up and said in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 15 and Simon Peter answered and said thou art the Christ the son of the living God. Immediately, Jesus responded. And Jesus said unto him, Blood, blessed art thou, Simon Bajona. For flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Yeah. Out there in the public, they are guessing he is that, he is that person, he is this person. But inside the house, who do you think I am? And that's a very important question. Very, very relevant even to our time. As your preacher, they have different opinions about me in the public. Jesus wanted to know whether they also are in ignorance or confused. What do you inside, you that are inside, what do you think I am? It is important that you do know who is your leader. Is he a genuine leader? Is he a genuine man or woman of God? You must know. It is important that you do. Who do you say that I am? Jesus asked them. You inside people. You close to me. You my people. You my congregation. Who do you say I am? Thank God for Peter. He said... You are not John the Baptist. Hallelujah. Amen. You are not Elijah. Yeah. You are Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. If those outside are confused, you inside should not be confused. If those outside are in error, you inside should not be in error. It is important that you know who your leader is. And Jesus responded in that verse 17 of Matthew 16. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar -Jonah, flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven. Peter 
was able to correctly identify who Jesus Christ is. Now look at that same chapter, that same chapter. That same chapter 16 of Matthew. In verse 17, Jesus has praised him. Verse 20. Then charged he his disciples that they should not tell no man that he was Jesus Christ. We can go on to verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must get go on to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. In verse 17, Jesus has commended Peter. He said to him, flesh and blood had not revealed this to you, but my father. The Holy Spirit has revealed this to you. It is not ordinarily in the ordinary human calculation or guess or surmising. He had commended him that God was with him and that God had made a revelation to him in verse 17. 17. Now 18. 19. Verse 20. Verse 21. Four verses after. Only four verses after. Verse 22 now. The fifth verse. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Jesus had told them that how he was going to suffer, how he was going to be beaten, how he was going to be crucified, how he would be buried, and how he would rise, rise again from the grave. And Peter now takes up Jesus Christ. And the Bible says he berated him. He started to scold Jesus Christ. Don't you say that. Sometimes, you know, people can be overbold. They take their leaders and they treat them like they are children. No reverence, no respect. Berate them. Instruct them like they are talking to children. He took him up and berated him like as if Jesus was a baby to him. Don't you ever say that. Nothing like that will happen to you. And see what Jesus said. But he turned and said unto Peter, he just, I want you to look at me. He just turned and said unto Peter, verse 23, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou severest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Your calculations, your, your, your priorities are the things that are of men of this world. There's no spiritual value in you. This was one instance that there was virtually a brush between Peter and Jesus Christ in scripture. He took up Jesus Christ and started to scold him. And Jesus turned on him and said, Get 
behind me, Satan. Get behind me, get out. You are an offense to me. You make me angry. You are not concerned about the things of God. You're concerned about the things of this world. A man that the Lord himself has just told that you had the revelation from God. Now, I want you to notice the significance of the reply of Jesus Christ. Get me behind me, Satan, was not directed at Peter. It was directed at the one that is behind Peter and talking through Peter. Hallelujah! Amen. Get me behind me, Satan. He says that your words, the words that you are speaking to me are not your words. They are suggestions from Satan. Four verses after and Satan has come to use the same mouth. The importance of discernment. Even when the preacher is preaching, in between his sermons, in between the, the message, Satan can come in. He will make a wrong statement, on biblical statement. It is the duty of the church to discern, to be able to know, yes, this is scriptural, but that is not. That is not God. That's not the spirit of God. That's himself speaking, or that's Satan speaking through him. It is so important that the church is always on the alert. That shortly before Peter was commended by Jesus Christ himself. That his confession was a direct revelation from God. And in the next moment, it was Satan speaking to him. If it were the church of today, we would have taken what Peter said, line who can seek that. Just a few minutes ago, God has spoken through him. So God is still speaking. That Jesus Christ will not suffer. That Jesus Christ will not die. He came out to defend. Satan was talking that he will not die. Why? Because Satan knew that if Jesus died, the blood would be shed. Hallelujah! Yeah. The blood that cleanses from every sin. The blood through which we are forgiven and cleansed. For without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Satan came. He did not come through any small person. He came through the chief of the apostles. A leader can be possessed. You must design your pastor. You must design your priest. Day by day. Moment by moment. And know when God is still with him. Or God is still with her. And know when God is no longer with him or with her. For your sanity and for your good. Now, for a moment, consider. What if what Peter, the statement he had made, had carried? The consequence of it that the entire world would have been lost. One single error can destroy an entire life, can destroy an entire congregation. One single error. One drop of poison is as dangerous as a whole bottle full of poison. Hallelujah! Amen. It is important that you don't take these things lightly. And that you pray for discernment. To be able to identify this is God, this is not God, this is God, this is not God. For your safety and for the safety of the church. And because the church is not discerning, she is like sheep being carried to her slaughter. Beloved, Discernment is so important. Ask for this gift. It is evident 
that the man of God may on occasions, if he is not alert, mistake a suggestion of Satan for that of the Spirit of God. May God keep us on the alert, particularly we preachers and we the officers of the church, to be on the alert to know that this is the Spirit of God. That is the Spirit of Satan. And the other is you, the individual, the human spirit. Give us discernment, Lord. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty and everlasting Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father, blessed be your most holy name. You did not only Almighty God uh, set up your church. You gave her the instrument that will keep her, to stabilize her, to protect her, from incursions by evil and from error and from wicked spirits who desire to penetrate your church. Almighty God, to confuse your church, to lead your church out of your will, your perfect will for her. May you, Almighty God, stem that incursion today in the preachers, on the pulpit, Lord, in your church, that you grant unto us the gift of the designing of spirits that as officers of the church we will help our leaders to tell them and take them to the scriptures and say this is not God this is you this is not uh, it's not truth Lord to save ourselves and to save our congregation give oh God that gave the design of spirit to your pastors to your priests to your elders to the officers of the church in our Jesus name Amen and Amen thank you for being with us you are specially invited to attend our monthly central healing service every last but one Sunday of every month the venue is Great Evangelism World Crusade 35 Lichi Beach, Marwan, Yuba Port Harcourt. Time again is 9 a.m. And you'll be richly blessed as you come. Apostle G.D. Numberi has written great materials to help build your Christian life. You can order your copies of Symbolism in the Bible and The Ego Christian. This great book teaches you how to learn to study the life of the ego and to live according to God's principles and will for your life. Call 0803-340-7909 to order these great materials. You can also order other cut of messages on VCD, VHS, audio CD, audio tapes and DVD. Thank you for watching Cut Up. We believe that you've been greatly blessed. To contact us, please use the following addresses displayed on your screen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my God and my Redeemer. Amen.
Welcome to Cut Up. Cut Up is a program of the Ministry of Great Evangelism World Crusade. In Great Evangelism, we do not teach people how to make money. We teach people how to make heaven. For it profited no man anything if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul. There is the world to gain and there is also the soul to lose. It says the entire world and all that it offers is not as valuable as a man's soul. And yet, we leave the priority and measure on and in that which is of lesser value. The life of a man is a span of first day to 70, 80, 90 years. 90 something, perhaps. But that's how much a man can live on this earth meaningfully. After that, it's all over. And whatever you have gathered in this side of life is within that lifespan that you can see it, maybe enjoy it, and only, of course, to an extent. Because nothing material in this world truly satisfies. But there is a soul that will live hereafter forever and forever and forever, either in heaven or in hell. In great evangelism, we teach people how to make heaven. To make heaven, you have to not just know Jesus, but have him. If I have this phone, this handset, and I say this handset is for whosoever wants it. You see the handset. The offer is made. You have knowledge that this is for everybody. And for anybody. But only those who come to pick this handset will own it. So it is with Jesus Christ. And I say this with all sense of concern. There is head knowledge about Jesus Christ, his virgin birth, what he did on earth, his sufferings, his, his, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his place now in heaven, who he is. There is knowledge about him. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It is only those who pick this handset that can own it. It's only those who take Jesus Christ that can own him. In general terms, he died for the whole world. But only individuals that pick him will have the benefit of his death. So we preach that you get saved. We preach that you accept Jesus Christ and have remission of sins and be born again. That is the gospel. We continue our episodes on the gifts of the Spirit. I want to thank you for your reactions. Continue to watch us on RSTV after the national news at 9 o'clock. Thank you for your reactions. We hear many of you are being blessed out there. We are grateful to God and we give him the glory. Continue to watch us and to be part of this program. Continue to write and tell us how you feel. 
phone in. The phones are on the screen. How you feel? We want to know. If you're happy, we want to know. If you have learned something, we want to know. If you are angry, we want to know too. That makes the whole thing complete. Episode 21. The gifts of the Spirit. It is so important that Paul wrote in verse 1 of 1 Corinthians 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. That we should not be ignorant because they are there to protect us. We are zeroing in into the seventh gift which is the gift of discerning of spirits. In verse 10 of 1 Corinthians 12 to another discerning of spirits. And in the beginning, in the early days of this particular teaching, we were able to identify five major categories of spirits. One, the angel spirits, we've dealt with that. Two, demon or satanic spirits, which we are still dealing on. Three, human spirits, which we shall come into. Four, the spirit of God yet to be addressed. And five, the spirit of worldliness and fashion. We will come to all of this. So in our number two category, discerning of demon or satanic spirits, we have gone this far and in verse, or rather in episode 21 today, we shall study about discerning of spirits as it relates to churches, congregations. In our episode 20, we saw an example of the importance of designing the spirit that is upon your leader. The spirit that is preaching every day through him. Today and in this episode and a few episodes that will follow, we shall learn about discernment in congregations and churches. In the book of Revelations chapter 2, From verses 18 to 24, we come to the church of Thyatira. The church of Thyatira. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things said the Son of God, who had his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last shall be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou suffered, that is, allow that woman Jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants in committing fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to his works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I put upon you none other burden. Grave statements. We are looking at 
a church setting, a church situation. And we are being told that there is a female preacher in that church. Her name was Jezebel. In verse 20, we are told Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess. He said the church tolerated her. The church allowed her to lead them and to preach from the pulpit. She was the one who gave her title, herself the title prophetess. And there are many people who give themselves titles. Not titles that come from God. Titles they give to themselves. Apostle, senior apostle, prophet, prophetess, prophet to the nations. Bishop, Archbishop, Evangelist, Reverend Doctor. The titles are as many as there are people. They give to themselves, not God. And yet these things are meant to be positions in Christ, in God, that he only can give as a gift to an individual. So this woman was a usurper. She was the one who gave herself the title prophetess. Now who is Jezebel? We need to go into her background. Who was she? Why is it that God is so severe about her? Saying that he will destroy her and all that she is leading. Her children, her congregation. The consequences of following a wrong leader we shall see in this episode. So let's go for her background story. First Kings chapter 21 from verse 1 to verse 27. First Kings 21. If you read from verse 1, you will read the story of this woman. But what is important to us is that her husband was called Ahab. And it came to pass after this that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel hard by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth saying, Give me that vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs because it is near unto my house and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Nebo said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came to his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Nebo the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he slid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would not eat bread. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit as sad, so sad that thou eatest not bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Nabal the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let not thy heart be and make thy heart merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters and so on and so forth. Now, King Ahab had a poor man who had a piece of land by his palace. Naboth was his name. And you know these greedy, greedy land, land, land speculators? He was the king. If he wanted any land anywhere, he can get it. But he wanted to expand his yard, maybe where to park his car, you know, or maybe some gardens. And he called up Naboth and said, please, I want to, pay, I want to buy your, your property. Or if you don't want to sell it, 
I will give you another property somewhere else. Neighbor said, my king, I did not buy this property. I wish I bought it by myself. It's something I inherited from my father, and therefore I cannot sell it. King Yeha began to sulk. These men who have money, they want to own everything. They oppress the poor. They take their land by force. In fact, they have is even better. He wanted to buy it or give me an alternative. Others will just go and cook up one law and, 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 and clear it and use it. Owner can go to hell. He said, this is my inheritance, something I inherited from my father. Ahab began to sulk because nobody refused. He went home and covered himself, wouldn't eat. Jezebel comes along his wife. Why are you so sad? And he told her the story. Ah, is that what is making you to not to eat? Come on, are you not the king? Don't worry, I will do it. You had that land. Get up and eat. Well, she cooked up a story. She sent word to town. Call the nobles of the town. Get liars, good liars. Mm? They are war, are war type. You remember Awo? You know? Uh, yes, in the other episodes. Go and get that episode. You see, the Awo type of liar. Even when her hand is holding the fish in the pot. He said, Awo, who gave you this fish now? He said, Mister, I don't know. The Awo type of liar. And they came along and they set him up. He has blasphemed God. He has blasphemed the king. They lied over him and they stoned him to death. And then we are told Jezebel, after she, the report came to her that he was now dead, went over to her husband and said, Come on, get up now. You can go and possess the land. And as he went to possess the land, and it came to pass, verse 15, when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive, but dead. Yes, they will kill to get what they want. They will kill to get power. They will kill to get oppressed people to take their property. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the teacher by saying, Go down now and meet Ahab as he is taking possession of Naboth's land and pronounce unto him. Thus said the Lord, Has thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus said the Lord, In the place where Dogs licked the blood of Naboth. Shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine? Behold, I will bring evil upon, and will take away thy posterity, and will cut off from Ahab him that pissed against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. When he died, he died a bad death. It was in those days, you were never buried. If you are stoned, he died a bad death. Even today, in some of our communities, if you drowned in water, they don't bury you. That's a bad death. And so God pronounces judgment upon this woman. Beloved, this judgment of God was fulfilled to the letter. Second Kings chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face and tired her head and looked out of a window. And as Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, Had Zimri peace, who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down. 
and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses and he threw her underfoot and when he was coming he did eat and drink and said go see now this cursed woman and bury her for she is a king's daughter and they went to bury her but they found no more of her than this.